years ago. I did a few makeshift repairs on it just to kind of get her by while it was still in the entertainment center. And uh, it only lasted a week each time I did it. So we pulled it out. She bought a new one uh, and just never got around to fixing it. Um, but the new one that she has just doesn't, it's a 5.1 surround and uh, doesn't work very good for music. Uh, we put her book hooked her bookshelf speakers back up to the two channel output and it, the amps just don't have the power to run the speakers. So I'm going to try and fix this um, to get it back up and running. My stereo, which is down there, it's on a temporary cart, had the exact same problem and I wound up rebuilding that and it works excellent now. So we're going to do the same thing to this. And a lot of these Sonys have this problem. But I have my iPod connected. You notice there's no sound, but it's called a cold solder joint. I bet you there's a lot of them in there. So I'm going to show you how to flip it over and uh, desolder all the connections and resolder all of them, and uh, we'll see what happens. A look at the inside, you'll see this is the heat sink, and these are all the power amps. Look at the inside, this is the heat sink. I guess this looks like it's either it looks like it's steel. They, they make them cheap anymore. They're either steel or aluminum. Um, and these are all the MOSFETs. They're all the power amps. And it looks like these down here, the preamps. And these get actually fairly hot. And what happens is the legs are metal, they heat up. And what happens is the as the metal as they you know expand in the hole, it kind of uh, it's kind of like if you put your arm in the sand, in wet sand, you can work it around and make the basically just makes the hole bigger. Um, also, the fact that it's not heating up um, to about 300 some degrees, which is when solder melts, you get a cold solder joint. So what happens is, is you have solder. I'll show you. Well, excuse me, crappy makeshift repairs. What happens is. is the piece that comes through the hole let's see if I can get a focus on that works its way loose so there's a tiny little gap between the solder and the actual connector and it, the metal oxidizes, dust gets in there and not to mention the fact that there's just a bad connection um, you get exactly what's happening now and that's a cold solder joint so what I did before was I just reheated all the solder, refloated it and that's actually not, I don't care who you talk to, that is not a fix. That's only a temporary fix because you have to clean out all the oxidation and all the crap that's now in the solder. So you have to desolder it completely and resolder it. A lot of people say you could just quote unquote reflow the solder. Yeah, that'll work temporarily, but not. it's not a permanent fix. So, and looking at this, actually I didn't do too bad of a job considering I had my head in an enter entertainment center when I was doing this. But um, this all, all these connections need to be redone. There's also a lot of these connections here. All these bands. And I blew this out with dust beforehand. It was pretty bad. I want to clean all these out with the contact cleaner. And if you notice in here, these here. I want to clean all them out. And take a look at all the components, make sure nothing's burned up. I just give it a quick once over. It's not an old machine, so it doesn't need a full rebuild, it just needs a repair. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. One thing you want to do before you do any work on an amplifier, a power supply, or any kind of large electronic equipment, really any, is discharge the power supply. And it's unplugged. Um, this is the soldering iron, this is the power adapter for the camera, and this is just for transformer for something else. If you notice there's these big circular things. They're capacitors. They hold a charge. And the thing about capacitors are they're kind of like batteries except they want to release all of their power at one shot. These are fairly large. The ones that are in let's say a window unit air conditioner or central air are huge and to discharge them I've actually seen them 
melt screwdrivers um, because what you do is between, on the two terminals underneath of it you short them out it's going to spark uh, so you got to be careful and you don't want to touch that it will burn you um, I don't, it's not necessarily going to kill you well if you touch it with your finger it's probably not but if you let the charge go through your body you're going to get a jolt but uh, you're probably going to get burnt more than anything if I get put a hole in your finger um, and that is pretty filthy still but it was you should have seen it before um, discharging a window unit air conditioner is it's fun uh, I've actually like I said I actually seen it melt the tip off of a screwdriver so these little ones you really don't have to worry about too much but these big ones this is the transformer here and these are the two capacitors and I'll show you usually there's a panel on the bottom I'll let you get to them in this case there's not so the proper way to do it would be to take these screws out and remove that whole board carefully and discharge them now what I did is I just, this is, don't ever do this, but what I did is uh, I used a pair of you know, screw, uh, scissors and I snuck it in behind there and discharged the two terminals. And basically, if you look, I'm going to see if I can focus in on this. There. You see that symbol right there? That's the symbol for capacitor. And there's the contacts. So what I did is I put a screwdriver or a um, pair of scissors in there and I touched the two terminals together and it discharged and it sparked. Just to show you, see that? Yeah, that was from that. So it's a good amount of power and you shouldn't be using screw, uh, scissors. They weren't meant for this kind of thing, but whatever, it worked for me. So I'm too lazy to take this all apart. Now, I actually found this was actually kind of funny when I was down doing this. Um, Usually I don't see this kind of thing, but this actually says, it's upside down, but it says please discharge supply. Discharge the power supply. Because even though it's not plugged in, those capacitors are charged, and this is getting a whole lot of power still in it. And you don't want to release that. A, you don't want to short anything out and uh, ruin any of the components. And B, you, you know, don't want to hurt yourself. So I did that already. So this board is dead. Essentially, it has no power to it. So now, we get to uh, start desoldering. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to desolder these. First thing you need to get is a desoldering braid. Uh, this is what I use. It's just the copper wire braided together. Copper is an excellent uh, conductor of, of heat. What you do, and this is hard to do with the camera in front of me, so you will excuse me if it's not perfect, but... You lay the braid down on the joint and heat and heat up the braid. And what it does is it sucks the solder onto the braid. Now I didn't do a very good job, like I said, because I have the camera in front of me and I can't really get a good angle. So, and it's not working too well, so here's what I'm going to do. What you can do is if you have something like that that doesn't have a lot of solder on it to begin with, you can kind of get it going. What you do is you add solder. You don't want to do this for too long because you don't want to cook the component. I'm just heating it up, adding more solder. I know this kind of seems backwards from what we need to do, but you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. I'm going to put the braid, since there's not much on there, I'm going to reuse the same part of the braid. And see, it sucks all the solder up. And uh, if you can see this, because I can't see the viewfinder. You can see all the solder that came up. Now, you'll see, this is also one of the reasons I said that you need to discharge the board. You're dealing with metal here. It's conductive. And the last thing you want to do is short out a component that's live. And you'll burn it out. And you'll have more problems on your hands. There you go. 
Now, I'm going to turn the camera off and do the rest of them um, so I can get a good angle and actually see what I'm doing. But that's essentially what you need to do. So we'll do those first and then I'll be back. I'm going to check in with you and show you. That's essentially what you're looking for. I still have a little bit more to get off. But you notice the solder's coming off nicely. Um, now, the one thing I didn't tell you is, <coughs> or I didn't make clear, when you use this stuff, when you put the iron on, you want to make sure that you're touching only the braid. And if you have to, you can use some needle nose and squish it to spread it out some, like I did here, to get more surface area. And also, it makes it a little bit thinner, so it heats up a little bit quicker. Um, also, you got to be careful not only of damaging the component with the heat, but also all these little tracks on the board can peel off. Also, and the pads, below all this solder, below all these, if you were to take these off, there's expo exposed copper pads. They can come off. I mean, it's essentially only glued on. Um, if you wonder how that's made, look up how, to, how they make circuit boards. But... Um, because you need to make them at home a different way, but you got to be careful how much heat you use. Now, if you are worried about damaging the component, one of the things you can do is let me turn this over. See all those legs? You get a heat. Now, it has a heat sink to protect the component from heat, but you're applying about 300 and what, 320, 350 degrees Celsius to each of these legs. That light's going right up in here, and these are made out of like silicone. So you got to be careful, you know, of baking the component. Now, one of the things you can do is either a get a clip-on heat sink, or b use one of these. It's not perfect, but it works. Just enough to uh, draw some of the heat away from it to give you a little bit more, you know, wiggle room, and just to, you know, attach them to each of the legs. Now, if you use the same wire for two legs. You kind of make sure it's completely discharged because, you, again, you don't want to short it out. You short it out, you got problems. You don't, you're not just going to be, you know, resoldering it. You're going to be replacing and finding that these components, a lot of these stuff, you're not going to find at your local radio shack. You're not going to digikey or you know something online to find that component, and it's just going to become a big headache. And it's, you know, what do they say, an ounce of prevention? Well. If you're unsure if it's completely discharged, don't use both sides. Just use one and make sure it doesn't touch anything else. Okay, so just check it in. I got everything resoldered. Um, this kind of worries me. It's a little discolored here. That's probably because I think it's extremely hot. So I'm going to desolder all these and redo them. And I don't even know if I can do this with the camera, but if you see, yeah, see that? Look at these ones here, and then look at that. Notice the difference? That's the sign of a gold solder joint. See how this solder isn't exactly shiny? Um, this actually looks like lead-free solder that they used, so that's why it's not shiny. But notice how there's kind of like a gap. I mean, it's not that great for this camera, but you see what I'm talking about, I hope. Um, that looks like a transistor, and that looks like it gets hot. So I'm going to flip it over and see exactly what it is. But that looks to me like a cold solder joint. So I'm going to desolder them and re-solder it. Um, but i got to do a little bit of cleanup. One thing you want to do before you're done is do an inspection of the board. Any solder splatters. Let's see if I can show you. Where is that? Like that. Solder splatter. Get that out of there. If you have anything touching terminals, it's not good, especially if you're stripping wire. That will short something out, and you'll have problems. What is this? Uh, that's just the hair it looks like. But I'm not sure, so I'm going to get that out of there. 